Hello everyone, welcome back to another session in Dentistry and more. Today we have a topic from Conservative Dentistry that is bevels in Dentistry. Okay, so bevels uh, we need to apply in Restorative Dentistry in order to provide strength for the restoration. So there will be a weakest link in any restoration that is a tooth restoration joint or marginal peripheries. So we should make uh, every effort uh, in order to make these joints uh, are most favorable uh, so that it has good strength to withstand the occlusal forces. So this uh, peripheral marginal anatomy of the preparation is called as circumferential tie so it is nothing but the joint or the junction between restoration and tooth so what are the bevels bevel so bevels are flexible extension of a cavity preparation which allows the inclusion of surface defects supplementary grooves or other areas on tooth surface so these are plane of uh, a cavity wall or a floor uh, directed away from the cavity preparation so earlier bevel was placed only on cavo surface margins and was defined as a rounding of or cavo surface margin at an angle so now they are placed at various surfaces of prepared teeth okay before it was just placed on the cavo surface margin that is a junction between future junction between the restoration and tooth but now it is placed at various surfaces of the prepared teeth and the bevel is defined as any abrupt incline between the two surfaces of prepared tooth or between the cavity wall and the cavo surface margin in the prepared cavity so this bevel they require minimum tooth involvement and do not sacrifice the resistance and retention of the restoration so it should maintain resistance and retention for the restoration so these bevels are part of this circumferential tie and are one of the major retention forms okay major retention forms for a cast restoration okay as it increases the possibility of a direct retentive frictional component between the casting and the tooth so it is on the cast restoration it becomes a major retentive factor so this makes it possible to decrease or eliminate the cement line by bringing the cast ally closer to the tooth surface now we'll move on to the main topic that is types of bevels so according to shape and types of tissue involvement they are divided into six types Partial bevel, short bevel, long bevel, full bevel, counter bevel, and hollow ground or concave bevel. Or the types of uh, bevel classified according to the surface they are placed. That is the surface. So that will be gingival, gingival bevel. occlusal bevel or functional cusp bevel okay the first one is partial bevel so partial bevel as you see the picture here uh, it involves a part of the enamel wall not exceeding two third of its dimension so this is not uh, used in cast restoration except to trim weak 
enamel rods from the margin peripheries whereas a short bevel this includes the entire enamel wall but not dentin you need to uh, see the difference in partial bevel we have just uh, two third of its diamond length or the uh, total dimension whereas a short bevel it involves entire enamel wall but there is no dentin so this short bevel is uh, indicated in class 1 alloys uh, especially for the type 1 and type 2 but as a long bevel uh, this includes all of the enamel wall one half of the dentin okay this is so the short bevel involves the enamel whereas the partial bevel two third of enamel okay a long bevel this includes all of the enamel wall and one half of the dentin okay so this involves enamel plus one half of dentinal wall so its major advantage is that the internal box step resistance and retention features are preserved in this bevel and it is indicated in first three classes of cast material next we have full bevel this includes all of the dentinal and enamel walls of the cavity wall or floor okay this includes entire enamel and dentin this is how it goes two third of enamel complete enamel enamel plus half of the dentin complete enamel and dentin so although it is well reproduced by all four classes of the cast uh it is its use is avoided except in case where it is impossible to use any other form of bevel so it is uh, rarely used now we have the counter bevel so you can see the picture when capping cusps to protect and support them this type of bevel is used which is opposite to an axial cavity wall on the facial or lingual surface of the tooth so which will have a gingival inclination facility or lingually so that is counter bevel in order to protect the cusp next is the last one hollow ground or concave bevel so this is the only form which is not in a flat plane form so this allows more space for cast material bulk which is a design feature needed in special preparation to improve the material's castability retention and better resistance to stresses so these bevels are ideal for class 4 and class 5 so the buccal slopes of the lingual cusp and the lingual slopes of the buccal cusp should be hollow ground to a depth of at least 1 mm you can see here in order to provide sufficient bulk of material on these surfaces and also to increase the resistance form so we create the buccal slope of lingual cusp and lingual slope of buccal cusp in a hollow ground to a depth of 1 mm to provide a bulk so one more we have that is reverse bevel okay reverse bevel so this reverse bevel is placed at the dentinal portion of the cervical wall towards the axio gingival line angle okay so it is placed on the dentinal portion and towards the axio gingival line angle so this bevel at gingival wall will prevent tipping movements and this hydrostatic pressure during cementing a cast restoration uh, which can produce a rotational displacement of the casting with flat gingival walls so this effect is resisted by the reverse bevel resulting in even a better seating of the cast restoration so in order to avoid the rotational displacement where we keep flat gingival walls so we create a reverse bevel in order to prevent the tipping movements so that was about uh, the first classification based on the shape now we have the 
next classification is based on the surface it is being placed so we'll start with uh, the first one that is gingival bevel it is a weak enamel is removed you can see the picture here bevel results in 30 degree angle at the gingival margin that is uh, burnishable because of its angular design so a lap sliding fit is produced at the gingival margin which help in improving the fit of casting in this region okay so we create a 30 degree angle at the gingival margin so that is gingival uh, finish uh, i mean bevel so a lap sliding fit is produced at this gingival margin now we have Mm, the occlusal bevel so occlusal bevel uh, create a obtuse angle marginal to surface it create a obtuse angle uh, that is uh, angle which is greater than 90 degree okay so it will be like this more than 90 degree it will be more than 90 degree so which is the bulkiest and the strongest configuration of any marginal tooth anatomy which can resist stress Next one is a functional cusp bevel. It is additional removal of tooth structure in a cavity preparation. Okay, so a wide bevel placed on the functional cusp provides space for the adequate bulk of metal in an area of heavy occlusal contact. When there is a chance or if there is a functional cusp is there in order to provide additional bulk. Okay, so we provide a bevel in the functional cusp. So functional cusp bevel increases the thickness of thin occlusal axial junction of the restriction. So angulation always will be 45 degree. So why it is very important because it provides additional thickness for the material which is necessary because these are the maximum load bearing areas because maximum occlusal forces are being placed on the functional cusp. So if we provide a bevel on the functional cusp for the 45 degree angulation it gives more space for the material so the can the cast metal or the restoration or the newer material can withstand occlusal forces so large bevel is given which will help to bear the excess load without fracture so location it is prepared on the palatal cusp of maxillary teeth Palatal cusp of maxillary teeth and buccal cusp of mandibular teeth. It's a very commonly asked question. Functional cusp bevel. This bevel. It, so this functional cusp uh, bevel is a commonly asked short note, and this bevel itself is a long execution. That is. Uh, Functional cusp is placed on the palatal cusp of maxillary teeth and buccal cusp of mandibular teeth. Uh, on exam point of view, it is very commonly asked question. So any bevel can be asked as a short note or short essay. So and the most common was the functional cusp bevel. Hope you understood this topic. Uh, always draw picture of the bevel in order to get good marks because just writing the description will not give you marks because this is all about understanding the concept so you need to draw a cavity and the bevel okay so i'll come up with a new topic in dentistry and more thank you